Welcome to the booby trap. <laughs> Get tight, sir. <laughs> Hello, I'm Captain Brett Holden, the booby trap. I'm Captain Matt Reed. We're going to rig a squid here for daytime and nighttime sword fishing. Going to show you some tricks that may help you keep fish on, may help your hookup ratio go up. I think it'll definitely help a lot of people that are not rigging this way and preventing them from losing their fish during the fight. There's been some just simple, simple little techniques that we've used that have changed our game for sure. And Matt's gonna rig this squid here for the video and show you how we stitch it, how we keep it together, how we keep the bait from getting blown up on the bike. And I hope this helps out. For your squid rigging necessities, a small piece of copper tube, just, just big enough to fit your 300 pound in. Uh, you can get these in any, any Hobby Lobby or hardware store or anything as such. Maybe they come in, in, in bigger, bigger lengths, you may have to cut them down. That's what we've done here. We've cut them to about 12 inches long and this cut one, them into a small point at the end. This one's cut into a point at the end to go through the squid's head. Mortician needle. Um, I like the, the slightly larger ones. Comes with a little bit bigger eye, easier to work with with the 70 pound floss. Uh, 70 pound floss, uh, size 2.2 crimp to hold the squid at the top of the leader. Six foot piece of 300 pound mono to a 7691. This is a 12 aught. That's all you need and you're rigging a squid. All right, so I've got a, my 12 aught 7691 to about a six foot section of 300 pound. We use six foot because you don't want to use eight or 10 foot of leader past the swivel. It gives the fish room to get under the boat. Swordfish like to run at your wheels. They like to run at the props. They like to get in the shade. So the six foot section gives you on an inboard or an outboard boat with a wind on leader, only six foot of line in the water. If you got 10 feet of line swimming around down there, the fish has room to wrap around something, charge something, and get away from it. So your angler has the option now with only six foot between the hook and the swivel to reel it all the way to that swivel. It also prevents a mate from getting hurt on the wire, but there's nothing like a swordfish on the wire. It's, it's the most powerful fish for its size in the world, there's no question. And on the wire, they dig, they're going. So it's all the way around six foot of leader from the swivel to the hook is very important to us. I, I know a lot of people promote 10 foot, 12 foot. That's just, a, that's just an accident waiting to happen and a good way to lose your fish. Okay, so what we have here is one of our local squids here in Costa Rica. It's not quite, uh, quite the squid we get from the bait masters, but it, it'll work, it's good enough. I've got a, a small copper tube, just big enough to fit my 300 pound in. I'm gonna feed the 300 pound up in there. You can buy this tube at places like Hobby Lobby. Or any hardware store. Hardware stores, it's small copper tube, just big enough for the line to go through. We're gonna use that tube to run, run our line up through the squid where it comes out the very point of the mantle. Simple copper way. tube comes out, your leader is through the squid, no cutting your squid, no having to re-sew him back up. You're through and through. So we're gonna pull that leader all the way through. The hook we're gonna bury right above the jet. See, I've noticed I've got the jet side of the squid laying up facing me. Right above the jet, we're gonna put, the, insert the hook and it's gonna come out the squid's mouth. Right out the beak. There's the beak. See, it took the beak out with it. Let me see it on this side here. So it's dead centered. If you got the beak, you know your hook centered. It's very important to have the hook centered so your, hook, so your squid swims and doesn't spin. Okay, this squid consists of five, five total different stitches. Each one has its own purpose, but all of them work collectively to keep the squid together for its high speed descent and it's being beat up by a swordfish. Some swordfish may only whack it once and eat it. Some may whack it 30 or 40 times. The key is to have a good bait throughout that whole time to get the bite. If your bait blows up, it's over. If the bait blows up in half, it starts to spin. A big swordfish is done with it. So this first stitch is aimed to, uh, to sew the head and the mantle together to keep it all into one piece. So we're gonna start in the head 
and leave a tag in it enough that you can tie a knot in it when you're done. This is 70 pound wax. I use 70 pound because it's easier to handle. These guys are quite slimy and slippery. 30 and 50 pound wax gets too slimy and too slippery to use. Anyway, so once this stitch is all said and done, there will be a box, a perfect square box on either side of the head and the mantle of the squid. It's a simple up, over, and down stitch that's repeated as you flip over the squid. Again, you want to make sure that it's all perfectly straight. If you hit the head out of whack, at an angle, and your squid's gonna be at an angle and he's gonna spin. So getting this perfectly straight is very important. You don't just wanna wrap them through there. You wanna take your time here. Each squid that Matt or I rig take approximately a minimum of 10 minutes and an average of 12 to 15 minutes per squid. You don't want to pull these too tight. You don't want to keep them too loose. Keep the squid natural looking. You don't want to suck him up, draw him up, or have him flopping around. So keep him natural looking. So in the end, when it's all said and done on both sides of the head and mantle, you will have a square. That's going to keep the head secure to the mantle through the high speed descent and through a swordfish taking it on. Remember We're this going to tie a double overhand knot here. That'll keep it secure. And, uh, I guess you'd call it a box knot. This squid is going to swim. He's going to be dropped. Even, even sitting at drift at night, he's going to be doing a knot to three knots depending on the current. On the bottom, you're going to be bouncing him up and down, up and down from 300 feet down to the bottom. So he's going to swim. He needs to swim. That's very important. Don't restrict any part of his body. Let him swim naturally. All right, this next stitch is going to stitch in the eye of the hook. It's going to secure the hook in place to where the hook has a firm, firm upward appearance. This is one of the tricks that we talked about at the beginning of the video. First, first what you want to do is you want to make sure that your, your leader line is sitting securely on the eye of your hook, not wrapped or twisted around the corner of the eye. It'll throw off the whole bait presentation in the end. Once, you, once your leader is straight, you want to set that hook in there about where you want it to go. Feel for the eye of the hook. The first stitch is going to go through the eye of the hook. Now my eye is secure. I'm going to leave about half that string out on the opposite side. I'm going to go below the eye and right next to the shank. Then back across the shank, directly across from the same spot where you, your needle just exited. Now, the trick to this part is, I'm going to come back up to the bottom side through the eye of the hook. However, my thread is going to come out the bottom side of this cross stitch here. The reason for that is when I tie my knot and cinch it down, it'll make the hook stick straight up. It won't allow a hole to wallow in the squid and it won't allow your knot to fall in and be essentially useless. So we're going to go in through the bottom side of the squid. Again, feel for the eye of the hook. Check it. It's through the eye, it's below that, that horizontal stitch. It's freezing your hook into the body, the top part of the body of the bait. Watch my hook as I cinch this knot. The hook and the bait right now are, are becoming one, one piece, even though the bait is a two-piece bait. Watch my hook. See the hook straighten when he tightens the, the wax. That's the first part of securing the hook. 
Now the eye of the hook is secured in the bait. The next stitch is also aimed at securing the hook. This one for a slightly different reason. We're going to secure the head to the shank of the hook. So during the fight, when you have your swordfish on, it does not allow the head to push down on the shank of the hook, essentially pushing your fish off the hook. Remember that this shank is built to keep the fish on the hook. Simplicity. This part of the shank, you want nothing but the fish's mouth. If this one pound of squid squishes down onto this shank, what's it doing? It's pushing your fish off the hook. So when he comes in, what he's fixing to do is half hitch multiple times, very, very tight, through the squid body onto the hook. This hook is gonna be 100% part of this squid. This squid will not move down that hook. It's not gonna happen. So this hook stays free strictly to keep the swordfish on the hook. It also serves as a purpose, which we'll show you in a while, on our release, on our release weight, where the squid doesn't blow up the, up the, the hook on the way down. So this process here keeps the squid from riding up the hook or riding down the hook. And it's very important that it's very, very tight or it'll work its way loose and you'll push your fish off. Many people, it took us a long time to learn, why are we four for eight? Why are we four for nine? Well, all of a sudden we're nine for nine, 10 for 10. Our bait is above the hook, it's above the shank. So it's not pushing our fish off of the hook. And that's very important, I see it. It works in the same way with belly baits, with strip baits, with whole fish. Anything you're doing, daytime or night, secure what he's fixing to show you. Do that with this hook. And your hookup ratio will go up and your your fish to fish ratio will go up on what you what you keep on the line all the way to the boat. I guarantee it. Okay, so this stitch is gonna start in one side of the head, directly through to the other side about half of it through we're going to go across the other side of the head and we're going to go in at an angle where the needle will come out the mouth as well we're going to repeat that process with this other side of the, of the thread we're going to cross over from where we originally put a stitch we're going to go directly through to the other side of the head We're going to cross the head once again and go through at an angle to where the needle comes out the mouth. Now you have your hook and two pieces of thread coming out the mouth. We're going to take those two pieces of thread, we're going to tie overhand knots in opposite directions of each other so they work against each other to tighten up. Now the first, the first one as you tie it, you don't want to tie too tight because it's squeezing the head of the squid and if you tie it too tight it will, it will break your squid's head in half. But as you tie the knots continuously down the hook, you can put heavier pressure on each one. You can see he's all the way in this, into the squid. This, these half hitches are going to ride all the way to here when he's finished and get tighter as he goes. Towards the end, I'm going to start doubling the knot, just to give me a little more security. Now you can see the half hitch is protruding out the squid's mouth. They are all the way up into his head and now coming out of his mouth. That squid is secure to that hook in every mean. At this point of the hook tying process, you cannot make the knot too tight. It's another part where 70 pound comes in. You can, you can really put the pressure on your last two or three knots to assure that they don't come loose. To 
to finish up the squid, we're just going to run a, a cross stitch going all the way up, but it's going to be broken into two different sections. And the reason for that is when those swordfish get down there and start beating up on a bait, if you break a, a stitch somewhere in the middle, your whole, your whole squid will come unraveled and it will be no good. Or we break that into two separate stitches to where if one breaks, you still have half your squid stitched to your leader, provided, preventing it from slumping down on your leader. So we're going to take this first stitch and we're going to run a cross stitch about two-thirds of the way up the squid. And we're going to cut it off there and tie it and then we're going to finish with another cross stitch going the rest of the way up. You want to be, be sure to get plenty of, of wax line for this because it takes a little more than you think. We're going to start down here at the bottom corner of the mantle. Go directly straight through. You want to pull a little bit less than half your, half your thread through. You're going to turn the squid over, go over and up, insert another one. Continue this process for, I like to do anywhere from three to five cross stitches on this first two thirds of the squid. Depending on how, how big the squid are will depend on how many go in there. You want the squid to have a little bit of rigidity with this so it doesn't flop back over the hook and hook the leader when he gets whacked. But you don't want it to be too stiff that it won't swim and it won't act natural. You want the wings flipping, you want the wings swimming when you're fishing this squid. The bigger the swordfish, usually the more finicky they are, the more they like a moving bait, a lively looking bait. The smaller swordfish, just like any other fish, are a little dumber than the old ones. You know, the, the better a squid swims, the better chance you have of a big swordfish. We'll take this other end, half of the thread, we'll go directly across. Now we're going to start crossing the, these first stitches that we laid in. So we're going to go over and above. You're going to start to see your X's happening. Be sure where your fingers are behind the squid as you do this. Never fun poking yourself. Getting fresh squid is really important also. Makes it much easier to handle while you rig. We get all of our squid, we've always gotten in the States from bait masters. Uh, they've been, they've had exceptional bait. Uh, never had single complaint on their bait whether you buy them pre-rig or you buy them you know to rig yourself in the five packs four packs whatever they are uh, these baits like I said are not quite the quality what we're used to having from them but they're not bad looking squid though this next step is going to be one of the most important steps also just about as important as the back stitching is going to be right here. What we're going to do is we're going to make this as solid as possible with the same type of X's, very, very tight. Swordfish tend to hit the bait here and they tend to hit the bait here. So right here, this section he is fixing to do, you're going to see a lot of stitching right here. You have to be very careful and not sew your wings up when you're stitching this part. If you could make this just a solid piece, it would even be better. So we're going to do everything we can with thread to make this solid and it's going to come up to here and line the squid up. So we'll see how he cinches up? So this part of the stitching is what's going to hold him together, make him swim properly. A lot of important parts into this part of the bait right here. You don't want just a couple of cross stitches, you want a lot of stitches right here. So we're going to start from the front side of this squid we're going to flip him over and go in between that first stitch there. That way they are still part 
essentially one stitch, but they were put together of two different stitches. And again, we're going to pull through a little bit less than half. Now from this, we'll start the over and up movements. You want to you want to pin that wing at the same same place that you pin the mantle. That keeps the squid looking natural. Keeps his wings able to move. I only put I think, four stitches coming up the body. Up the top of this mantle will at least be four to six, sometimes eight, depending on the size of the squid, if you're rigging a really big one. But see, I'm coming just out the side of the mantle, and I'm going across the mantle, and just into where the wing meets the mantle. That way it keeps that wing steady and, and flapping just like it should naturally. Take the other half of our thread and go cross up everything we just made. We'll start by going directly across this pre-existing pre stitch. And then we'll work our way up. this squid out I'm gonna slide on a crimp that I'm actually using one size larger crimp than what 300 pound is called for this is a 2.2 millimeter crimp I'm gonna slide that down the leader and the reason I'm using one crimp up bigger size is it makes it a lot easier to get these two ends of thread through the crimp just like that and since this crimp isn't crimping anything important tackle-wise, you're not gonna it's not gonna cause you to lose a fish if it slips. We're gonna pull the squid up tight. Make sure, make sure he's level here, everything's straight. We're gonna pull it down tight, we're gonna pinch that leader and we're gonna pinch that wax line to make sure it pull all it stays underneath. in place. Pull it underneath there one time, where you can see you pull it. He's pulling the wax line tight squaring the squid up. You don't want to pull it where the squid's at an angle. It cinches up on you. So now that the squid is nice and tight on there, I'm going to mash this crimp down real hard. Above the, the, the crimp, just in case for any reason something wants to slip. And that is your day or nighttime Texas bulletproof squid.